of a school's existence is the opportunity to gather groups together and celebrate. There's a lot of history here. And uh, I think it's appropriate uh, to recognize some special guests here who absolutely represent <coughs> history that I'm sure Brian absolutely respects. And those are the first class of the Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, a couple of people that uh, I think, Brian, you know just a little bit. Very well. So I'd like to introduce, uh, to make sure everybody knows, uh, we have four of our six inductees uh, from last year's class that are here. I'd like to introduce for all of you to make sure you know they are here. We have, starting from left to right, Bill Norton, our basketball coach. Bill here. We have to his left, we have Mike Lodish from the class of 1985. We have to his left, the weightlifting, I mean the start, the uh, the uh, track cross country coach, Bob Stark. From the class And then Brian's coach of football, Al Fracasa. Thank you, Al. Well, one of the great parts of uh, our history is that maybe not in the very beginning, but as time marched on, more and more of it was captured on video. And so before we begin with a few words from uh, some of Brian's friends and family, we have a little video to show you of uh, some of Brian's exploits at Brother Rice and elsewhere. Yeah, it would be a slide. It's fun to run this uh, uh, that way and to watch those videos, but it's a lot more fun to hear from friends. Kevin? Thank you. Did you say friends? <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is uh, Kevin Kennedy, and I've been asked to uh, say a few words this afternoon uh, in honor of Brian at the Athletic Hall of Fame. Introductory remarks my dad always told me are a lot like being the corpse at an Irish wake. <laughs> it's necessary before we start the party, but no one expects you to say a hell of a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to be pretty short. <laughs> I also promised John Bernie that uh, I would <laughs> keep, it, keep it shorter than Digger Phelps at the uh, championship. <laughs> Digger went two hours and 32 minutes. <laughs> and just to give you an idea, I'm, many of you were there, but uh, it took him at least 42 minutes to get from his birth to the eighth grade when he got the nickname Digger. <laughs> Tommy Chisholm turned to me halfway through. He said, we're going to have another Olympics before this guy is done. <laughs> uh, I had the honor to uh, nominate Brian for the Hall of Fame. And when I did that, uh, I talked to uh, many of his siblings, and uh, when I presented his name, I shared a, a story that was in the paper that maybe not everyone in this room had heard of. Uh, about two years ago, um, there was an article in the Cleveland paper about a young man who was a soldier whose name was Brian Brennan. And as you can imagine, uh, the soldier's father was a football fan, and he had followed Brian through Boston College. And, Cleveland Browns, and um, they got to talking, these uh, two men whose sons were both in the hospital at the same time, and uh, he found out, he, one of the men was a Cleveland Browns fan, and he found out that the soldier was named after Brian because he had been born prematurely, and they didn't think that the boy was going to make it. Well, long story short, he did make it, uh, and he was named after Brian goes to the Citadel, goes into the Army, is employed in Afghanistan, and his Humvee got blown up by one of these IEDs. And the soldiers in the back didn't make it, they died, but he uh, lost his legs, but he was uh, in the hospital and he was getting better. Well, the story gets back to Brian through this radio station, and Brian and Bethany go out to Washington, D.C., and they visited the soldier while he was getting better. And I think that says a lot about Brian and the man that he became, and that's everything that we want to accomplish at Birmingham Brother Rice High School. So without further ado, Brian's son, Brian Jr., has a few comments. Here we go. Yeah. I've had the opportunity to see my dad publicly speak many times, whether it was on the sports team I was on or actually at the Boys Hope Girls Hope charity he helped raise over $3 million for. 
And one thing I learned from my dad is you always need to start with a joke. So my joke begins like this. A man is on a roof and there's a flood. He's somewhere down south and there's a flood and the waters are rising and rising and he prays to God. He goes, God, please help me. And eventually a rowboat comes along. And the man goes, get in, get in, get in. You've got to get in this rowboat. Uh, you don't have much time left. And he goes, no, God is going to save me. So the man goes, okay, rolls away. A few minutes later, a helicopter comes over, and a man gets lowered from a rope and says, you have to hold on to this rope. we got to get out of here now or you're not going to make it. The man goes, God's going to help me. You can go away. So the man eventually drowns because he turns down this help. And he's up at the gates of heaven. And he goes, St. Peter, I need to talk to God right now. He goes and marches over to God. And God says, what are you doing here? And he goes, what do you mean, what am I doing here? I asked you for help, and you never helped me. He goes, what do you mean? I sent you a rowboat and a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, unlike that man, is someone who's never turned down an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and because this is an athletic introduction, I'll have to start with athletics, right? And he graduated from Brother Rice and went to Boston College, where he actually, I just found out, won the Student Athlete Award, Thomas Scanlon Award, and graduated as the all-time leading receiver, um, which has apparently been replaced now, but we still will remember you for that. And <laughs> went to and played with Doug Flutie, went to the Browns, and was the fourth all-time receiver, um, receiving under Bernie Kosar. And Dad, I just want to say that you know you've always been there for me if I've ever needed it, and you've always been a great family man, and we're all very proud of you. And one more introductory note, uh, Coach Al. <coughs> Ryan. Sweetheart. I guess I can talk to you. Ryan. You know, there are certain things you can't uh, teach you on the people. One of them is uh, courage. And uh, I've never seen Brian ever loaf, ever. And uh, I, I speak with Coach Norton, too. I used to watch Coach, uh, you know, Coach basketball. And, and I said, uh, if I a good basketball player, he said, we'll watch. And all he did was yeah. right after the ball. Coach Norton really loved this kid because he really had a good time. And then Coach Stark, uh, he ran a 220 yard he did everything in football our model that year was never never give up and I heard that Brian uses that model when he speaks all around Cleveland there I heard a lot about you all good things <laughs> but uh, Brian was a very special athlete he got along very well. And he had this uh, cockiness about him that, that uh, I still picture today. He has this a certain walk. I mean, it's kind of hard to, just, uh, to explain it to you, but he kind of hopped and he walked. He wanted to make sure everybody knew where he was. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, Brian uh, is going down as one of the great athletes in my book, and uh, will never be forgotten. Thanks for everything you've done. For Brother Rice, and thanks for uh, the good example you were as captain of the football team. All your buddies are here, most of them tonight, and uh, they all feel the same way they do. So God bless you, buddy. Thanks, Coach. Well, with that, uh, it is my honor to award to Brian Brennan for the class of 2010 this symbol of the Athletic Hall of Fame. And Brian, I want you to know you were a Brown, you were an Eagle, always a warrior. I agree. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> well, hopefully I don't get emotional, but um, hey, Brian. Thank you. That was really nice to say. Kevin, coach, thank you very much. Um, you know, Brian, really appreciate that you honored me not only with your talk, but with your hair. Your hair brought me back in the late 70s. I'm just glad that your scenes were part of the late 70s. 
You know, Renee called me uh, a while ago and asked me to invite some people to a luncheon um, because of the honor. And I said, Renee, I feel a little uncomfortable in, in doing that. But she made me, and uh, everybody here, um, I invited you. And uh, you're very meaningful in my life. Um, my family has come a long way. Um, my daughter, Grace, uh, from Bucknell. Coach Stark, you like this. Grace was a six-time All-State runner at Gilmore Academy. She won four by four. Grace spent some time with Coach Stark a little later. He <laughs> helped me out a lot. And my son Brian, you met him. Um, my daughter Courtney can't make it. She's in New York. But uh, a lot of my family came in. My mom and dad came from Vero Beach all the way up here. Uh, my brother Marty flew in from New York and actually uh, had a bunch of his friends come in from the class of 78. Great to see you guys. Uh, Tris and John came in from uh, Chicago, a little Jack Dempsey's with them. Thank you very much. Uh, I figured Coach Rad um, isn't here today, so I'm going to take his time as well. <laughs> Richard and Chris are, are local here, and their son Christopher who goes to Brother Rice. I appreciate you coming. Gwen, Bradley. You're so nice to attend. Uh, hopefully, Jimmy's grinding somebody's tooth right now. Put a crown. So, you pay for that Boston College. You have to pay for that. I have friends here from Cleveland, Chandler, and Chandler Jr. Wait, it's Chandler the third and Chandler the fourth, right? Is that correct? <laughs> Junior and the third. Okay, Andy Hardy, Bill Mydell, um, and everybody else here. It's just uh, my classmates uh, that I've invited here. It's very special. Um, it's always nice to be remembered, uh, uh, any function. Um, so I thank John and Ed and Brother Rice for including me in this year's class. Um, I know Rademacher can't be here today. Um, next year, Renee, we've got to make sure we save him a seat rather than all the Brennans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a very special honor to me because so many great athletes have come through Brother Rice. And to be included this year, again, is just a special honor. Um, Congratulations to the coaches last year in the inaugural class. Um, I think I'm a pretty good player because of you guys and the disciplines, the three of you, Coach Carrico, you included, um, instilled in me. Thank you very much. Um, Mike Lodish, if you play three or four years in the NFL, you've accomplished something. Mike, how many years you play? 11. Unbelievable. Um, unbelievable. And then B.J. Armstrong, right, he was in the class, he couldn't make today. I used to school B.J. Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was a senior in high school, B.J. was in eighth grade. <laughs> it seems like yesterday we're all warriors, but that was 30 years ago. It's our 30-year anniversary. Um, you know, I'm fortunate to have Kevin here and Creighton and Tommy Cote, um, three of my great friends from St. Hugo's. Uh, Jeff and Real, uh, not with us, but well remembered. Um, you know, before Rice, there was St. Hugo. And, and, and at St. Hugo, Aldgate and Wood Edge, we had this group, right? We had the Cotes on the street. We had the Ferguson's, uh, Shelley and Renee Lynch. Uh, we had Tommy Moore. We had Marty Pickett. We had the Deets family. We had the Reels. We would do everything together. Whether we walked to school together, played football together, sat in Clint Bond's seventh grade of American <laughs> history class together and got bored. Whatever it was, it was always memorable, that group. It's a great neighborhood. I think Michael Deese was Michael. You were my idol when I was growing up. You don't know that, but you were. Until <laughs> so you broke my leg. <laughs> in the real front yard. In the real yeah. front yard. You were already to get you down. You broke my leg. You would always go low and pick a tie. Pick it was on your back. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, everybody... Uh, here today is very special. I remember St. Hugo's is a great part of my life because it was a stepping stone to uh, Brother Rice. Um, my backfield was I played quarterback, Tommy played fullback, uh, John Whitehead was left running back, and Kevin was the madman. He was the right running back. Kevin would be like snot and sweat. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he was crazy. Crazy. Uh, football. You know, I remember we went down to Cincinnati Muller at Brother Rice. Remember Coach Picasso? Kevin Kennedy had 23 tackles. Thank goodness because I was behind you. They were on downfield. You were a great football player. Uh, Tommy, I love you. You know, we've had so many good times together. And everybody here, I mean, St. Hugo's was a big part. It led me to um, 
close with my cousin, Charlie Brown, who was a great player at St. Brady's Town, Brother Wright. Tommy Chisholm, you were a great basketball player. I used to fear you, uh, Steve English, probably the class. St. Beats, we had Tommy O'Leary, and we had, you know, Frask. I mean, you guys, uh, great, uh, great. it's just great to see everybody. My cousin Vince came as an honorary warrior. He went to the University of Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite aunt, and my aunt Tad's here from uh, Gross Point. Thanks for coming. Um, and Helen was a close second. Um, <laughs> uh, just so you know. <laughs> you know, I could tell some stories. One story in 1976, we're playing at uh, Holy Name Gym. Uh, I remember it was February 15th with my birthday. My mom planned a surprise birthday for me after the game. And we were supposed to beat Holy Name easily. Well, it didn't go like that because the ref was a parishioner of Holy Name. <laughs> and uh, he called a foul on Kevin Kennedy, Mark Moore. Uh, hit a basket to come in with one point. The ball rolls over. My dad was so upset he kicks the ball and hits the ref in the back. Sure enough, they get a uh, technical foul. They go on and run. Mark Moore makes his foul. We would put John up the line, but Chuck couldn't shoot. Uh, so we get Mark Moore and we lose. And then we had the surprise birthday party. Shelly would remember that. I don't know. Kevin, Creighton, all you guys. It was just. Uh, it was, a, it was a funny story. You know, I played in the NFL uh, for nine years. Uh, I couldn't fake it out anymore. You know, I faked them out for nine. Nine was enough. Um, but I played with great players. Uh, Boston College, my son mentioned Doug Flutie, great player, Heisman Trophy winner, off the charts. Um, great guy, Bernie Kozar, smartest player I ever played with. Uh, you know, people in Cleveland would ask me, what's the difference between Flutie and Kozar? I'd say, well, I can see Kozar throw it. Um, <laughs> Ernest Beiner, Gary Danielson, uh, Mike Pagel. Uh, my roommate at, at uh, one point at, at Cleveland Brown on the road was Don Strzok. Don Strzok was 41 years old. I was 30. Um, he was, we were playing in Washington. He said, BB, it's my birthday. I'm 40 today, and you're buying. And usually on the road, you know, you go out with you know, a bunch of guys, and you go back to the hotel because you have a meeting, and then you have curfew, right? Well, um, he goes, Brandon, you're buying, and I'm going to be at Clyde's in Georgetown. So they have a Catholic Mass. I go to Catholic Mass, and then I, I meet Don Strzok. He already has three martinis. He's back at quarterback now. Um, <laughs> we, we go back. You know, he has six, six pack as my roommate. You know, he's sitting there. He's drinking right over. Bernie gets hurt. He's got to be the quarterback. He comes in the, he comes in the huddle smelling like a brewery at the time. <laughs> It just doesn't have to be so. Oh, no. Well, there's characters in the NFL, we'll just say that. You know, I went on to be a Bengal, and Boomer Esiason was a great player. I remember him. He ran that team like uh, it was his team. Um, junior Seau, when I was a Charger, that guy was a stud. He could have played receiver, quarter, he could have played anything. Um, I played three FC championship games, very meaningful to me. Um, we lost all three. Uh, I know, uh, Lotus, you like uh, John Elway. Nobody in Cleveland does. behind Art Modell and now LeBron James. <laughs> but, you know, then I played for great coaches, too. Uh, Bobby Ross. Um, uh, I played for Dave Shula, uh, Bill Belichick. Uh, uh, he cut me, kind of. <laughs> 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 Shot and then there was uh, Sam Ritigliano. Sam Ritigliano was a, a great...